So I'm pleased to, to be with you. Uh, I will thank, to, to thank the organizers and participants for this group conference. I'm glad to be with you to talk about our project GTK Fortran, which is a GTK Fortran language binding. So my co authors are Jerry Delisle, James Tuppin, and Jens Unger from uh, USA, UK, and Germany. So first, I will explain you why GTK Fortran was born. Then I will show you how to install, build, and run the examples with a live uh, demonstration. Then we will have a look uh, inside the machine to see some code. And uh, finally, finally, we will conclude on uh, how you, you can use or contribute to the, the project. So first, uh, every scientist uh, needs to, to make some visualization because it's useful to understand your, your scientific results. Uh, and also scientists like to, to make beautiful pictures, beautiful images. So on the left here, you have uh, the first discovered pulsar. So you can see the regularity of the, the pulse with this visualization, it was in the late 60s. But finally, it's a great frustration for scientists because uh, in the Fortran standard, there is nothing to, to make such things except perhaps ski art, as you can see on the right with the Monte Broad set in 1978. But it's very hard to see that it's a fractal object. So when I was in my PhD in the late 90s, uh, I was using Visual Fortran. So it was digital Visual Fortran, the compact Visual Fortran, now it's Intel. And it had a quick, clean, uh, a quick win library for uh, Windows. So when I migrated to, to Linux, I was losing looking for something to replace that uh, quicking library. So uh, I wanted to make some bitmap drawing, uh, scientific plotting to, to make uh, graphical user interfaces uh, only using standard Fortran. I wanted it to, me, to be multi-platform, Linux, Windows especially, and to be a free software uh, and to be a perennial solution because when you are a researcher, you want your code to run in 10 years, 20 years, some, sometimes longer. Uh, so it's important that the solution uh, be perennial. Uh, there was or uh, there is a lot of great uh, tools to make uh, parts of that specifications, but uh, I was very, uh, I wanted very many things and uh, I still hadn't found what I was looking for so, until I read uh, that uh, post on uh, the Complang Fortran news group from uh, Tobias Bernius, who showed that it was easy to create uh, an empty GTK2 window uh, using the ISOC binding uh, module from the Fortran 2003 uh, standard, because GTK is written uh, mainly in C language. Uh, GTK is also uh, a free software with a GNU LGPL license. It's multi-platform. And it's perennial because uh, behind you have a, a GNOME foundation, GNOME being the desktop of uh, many great uh, Linux distributions like uh, Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Fedora, Red Hat. Uh, there were three great major uh, GTK versions. So in uh, 2002, GTK 2.0, in 2011, uh, GTK 3.0, and I hope in uh, at the end of this year, there will be GTK 4.0. In fact, GTK is not a library. It's a collection of libraries. So there is GTK itself with all the widgets to create a graphical user interface. But it's based on the glib, which is a general purpose utility libraries, and the G object library which allows to, to make some uh, oriented object programming using the C language. But there is also the G GDK PixBuff uh, library for pixel drawing. There is the Cairo library for vectorial drawing, uh, GIO for the input output, uh, GDK, Pango for the fonts, ETK, so a lot of libraries. Uh, so we launched a project with uh, Jerry DeLille and uh, Jim Stepin and Jens Unger. And the first commit was in uh, January 2011. And now in our project, uh, we have uh, 10,000 functions from the GTK libraries. An important thing to understand is that uh, in my talk, I will 
talk a lot about graphical user interface and graphics, but it's GTK for trend allows also to, to do other things. There is a lot of functions for strings, with regular expressions, date, time, find, natural utilities, uh, lists, trees, fish tables, etc. And of course, uh, we have tested only 500 functions in our tools and examples. So if you want to, to help us test our, question, uh, our functions, you, can, uh, you are welcome in the project. So you can see uh, on the bottom, a timeline with uh, commits in the GTK3 branch. GTK3 arrived just after the beginning of the project, two or three months later. So you can see that there was a lot of activity in the two first years where the project was maintained slowly, calmly. And then there is here uh, more activity since the beginning of uh, 2019 because uh, we are now preparing for the GTK4 release. So now I will show you, uh, try to show you how to, to install and use uh, GTK Fortran. So you can go on our GitHub, uh, GitHub homepage and uh, download the zip of the source code, or you can use uh, GitClone if you have a, a GitHub account. You need some dependencies, of course, a compiler. Uh, I'm using uh, essentially a G Fortran at the moment. You use CMake to build. You use some uh, development uh, files for the GTK3 library here. And uh, if you need, if you want to use PLplot, you need the dev files for PLplot and its driver Cairo. So now I will go into my uh, my terminal to try to to show you. Um, what uh, you can do. So here is a GTK Fortran directory. Um, you can see that there is no build directory. So I will uh, create a build directory and go into that directory. OK, now I need to configure CMake. CMake point point. So you can see that uh, CMake has detected uh, G Fortran 9.2.1, uh, GTK 3.24.12, and uh, PLplot 5.14. So now I will build the whole project and its examples um, with the command make dash G. That G is for parallelism to, to build faster. It will take uh, just uh, 30 seconds. So you can see the wall library is built. The examples, there is some warnings uh, in the release uh, build, but it's because of the PDLM export for, for Windows. OK, so it's finished. The project is built. I can now type. Uh, my uh, ls command to see what's in my directory. And can you see that there is two, two interesting directories now. There is the example directory and the plplot for the examples plplot. OK, so let's go in the example directory. There is around 40, 40 examples in that directory. Uh, first, I will launch the uh, uh, GTK hello Example, a very simple example. So a little window with two buttons. If I click and I say hello, the callback function is called and it prints uh, with a print star command uh, some messages in my terminal. And if I click on the second button here, I don't I have located the, the application and the main loop of the window. Okay. So this is the GTK hello example. Um, how many lines of code are necessary? You can easily look with a clock uh, command. So GTK hello is uh, in the directory examples. And you can see that there is 64 lines of Fortran code to open a window and put two buttons into that window. Uh, now let's have a look at some other examples, like uh, 
the KO clock, which help to get you the high level library of HTK Fortran. So here you have a club that is running, as you can see, and it's vectorial drawing, so you can maximize the window. Okay. This is based on the Cairo library. Um, now, we will look at uh, an example that is interesting because there is no graphical user interface. It's a very short example that we just uh, compute an image and save it as a PNG file. So if I look in my directory, I saw a new PNG file in my directory named Sierpiensky Triangle. And so this is the uh, PNG that was generated by, uh, by this little example. So it's, uh, it's a little example. It's uh, back without KWI. Like we can, can verify it. There is a few lines of code with the clock command. So there is 45 lines of Fortran, just to, and in these 45 lines, of course, there is the, com the scientific computing to, to compute the, the triangle. So you can see that it's quite easy to, to create PNG files with GTK Fortran. Now we can have a look at a more exciting example. Uh, and is buff zoom. The zoom version is about uh, zooming with the mouse. So you have a beautiful Mandelbrot set, and it's a fractal object. So I click on the corner to, to zoom. So it's fractal, so there is a lot of little Mandelbrots everywhere. Okay, I can even use the, the wheel of the mouse to, to zoom more. Okay, so this is a Beautiful example, and now an example with uh, Julia sets, which are also fractals that uh, are linked to the Mandelbrot set. So I can compute uh, here a Julia set. I can modify the constant, complex constant that is used to, to compute the, the picture. I can pause here the, the computation. I can restart the computation. I can see some results in the text mode in this tab. I can save the image as a PNG. I can use some predefined uh, predefined values, for example, uh, this one, this one, quite beautiful, or this one. OK. If I click on this link, it will open uh, a Wikipedia page about uh, about uh, Julia set. Uh, so um, this is the Julia set page. So it's the definition is very similar to that of the Mandelbrot set, but here you don't have a, the Z zero uh, term, but you have a constant C. And for each constant, you have a Julia set. I can show you Julia is a French mathematician who loses, who, lose, who lost his, his nose, sorry, who lost his nose uh, during the First World War. Um, so now let's have a look at some uh, PL plot examples. So PL plot examples are. Uh, in the PL plot directory. There is uh, around six examples. Uh, we'll just have a look at the 4E and 8E examples that are quite complex. So this is an example of how you can uh, you can make some PL plot plots inside the GTK window. So we have two, two times the two different scales. Here yeah, you can kit the application. And the 8E example is very cool. Here you have a three-dimensional curve. I will check all the box. 
will be prettier with some colors and I can uh, I can turn the azimuth, the elevation of a graphic. I can save a graphic in a, in a file, PNG, G, JPEG, uh, TIFF. Okay, so let's get. Um, so now I'm going back to my my presentation. Uh, here on this slide, I've put two examples of the real world, so real project. I can show you uh, the pages. So here uh, at the Virginia University, ECU, they have a nuclear simulator for teaching and research, and uh, they use the GTK Fortran to to make this. So you see on the left, I think it's Cairo drawing. Victoria drawing. On the right, you have some PL plot uh, plots. And uh, on the central screen, you have uh, a GTK window with uh, buttons or, or label, I don't know. So this is a big example. Uh, another example is uh, the insert radio application, which is, is about uh, radioactivity uh, measurements. So you can see here that. Uh, and such radio two was made with GTK Fortran. The, um, the interface was designed with a Glade software, with, which is a, a software to to his uh, the design of a graphical user interface. You can design your interface, put the buttons, uh, the menus, everything you need, and export it into an XML file that will be uh, used and downloaded by your, your application. So you can see there is a lot of, of windows with quite complicated uh, graphical user interfaces. No, of course, it's not easy. So to design such a GTK Fortran application, uh, you need to, to learn event-driven programming. So event-driven programming uh, is based on the main loop. First, you define your interface with all the widgets. Then you call the main loop. The main loop is idle most of the time. It is just waiting that uh, something happens from the system or from the user. If you, the user, for example, click on a button, then a signal will be emit, emitted and the, the widget will call its callback function. And in that callback function, you, you will put instructions that you want to to be executed uh, when uh, the button is clicked. Um, programming uh, with GTK is all about C pointers and C types. So you need to manipulate C pointers toward functions, objects, data, and C types, ELT, double, uh, uh, cars. And it's important because the world GTK documentation is, uh, is all about uh, C language. So I can show you here the, so the GNOME uh, documentation for the GTK button widget. So here, for example, I can find my GTK button new with label uh, function to create a button in the label. And you can see that the documentation gives me the C prototype uh, of that function with some explanation, parameters, what it returns. OK. So this is an example uh, of a code needed to create a button. So to create my button, I need that GTK, so that GTK button new with label function. I saw that it returns a pointer, a C pointer, because there is a little star. Uh, and I see that the argument is a character string. So I need uh, the Fortran interface that is uh, in GTK Fortran, in that file, gtk o 20 So this is a Fortran interface. So you can see the bind C statement. That means that uh, it will call a C function. You can see here that the function is returning a C pointer. CPTR is uh, defined in the ISO C binding module of the Fortran 2003 standard. And you can see that uh, the label uh, argument is an array of characters 
compatible with the C characters, also defined in the ISO C binding module. Uh, so in my photon program, I, I will need uh, to, to use the ISO C binding module to use the GTK module of GTK Fortran and import uh, all the functions I need. I will type something like my button equals the GTK button with label with here the, the string to put on the button. But don't forget that in C language, the strings are terminated by a null character. So you, you always need to, to add to your Fortran string the C null car constant. And here, I then call the, the signal connect uh, function to connect my button to its callback function. So when you will click on that button, my callback function will, will be called. And you can see here that I use the C funlock uh, function from the C is a C binding uh, module uh, because my callback function, which is a Fortran function, will be called by the GTK library, which is uh, in C language. So I need the C pointer toward the Fortran function. Okay, now let's look uh, quickly at how all these interfaces are generated uh, into GTP Fortran. So I will go in the source directory of the project. And there is a script, quite a big script, uh, 700 lines of Python, which is called CF wrapper point P. So now I will tell him to, to pass the GTK3 library. So no, it's passing all the C header files that are in the USL include directory. So all the, all the libraries that are in GTK, ATK, Cairo, GTK, Pittsburgh, Glib, and it will generate the, uh, the interfaces in Fortran. So you can see here all the files with the dash auto point F uh, 90 uh, termination. Uh, and you can see that there is some uh, small libraries like GDK, Pixbuff, and some uh, bigger libraries like uh, Glib and GTK. Here you can see that 700 files were scanned, 10,000 functions were generated, and you can see that 1,000 are marked as deprecated. It just means that. Uh, it will disappear in the GTK4 release coming soon. So there is also some tools to ease the pain for developers. So uh, James Tupin developed uh, a big high-level library, which offers a simplified interface for the most useful uh, function to create a, a graphical interface with patterns, menus, uh, windows, etc. Uh, there is also a GTK Sketcher uh, application by Jens Unger about, uh, so you can design your application with Glade, then save, uh, save the interface as a, an XML file, and GTK Sketcher will generate the Fortran code uh, to obtain a GTK Fortran program. So no, it's time to it's time to conclude. So how can you can contribute by uh, by testing. Uh, the TTK free branch. If you are not familiar with TTK, you can report issues on GitHub, you can help, uh, improve the documentation, you can write tutorials or write new examples if, if you are interested, because uh, only 500 functions were tested. And this is my last slide. So this is a SWOT matrix. I have already talked about uh, the strengths of the project, but there's also weaknesses and contributed is all about uh, working on the weaknesses using the opportunities. So there are a few contributors, but perhaps with the FortranCon uh, conference, there will be more. Uh, there is also the Fortran Lang community, which could be uh, interested. Uh, I've seen that there is a very good tutorial on, the, on, on that website. Uh, there is a lot of tools, like the FPN Packet Manager, which could be interesting. Uh, there is new compilers, like El Fortran or Flang. There is, there is a GTK4, so there is a lot of things that can be done. So my time is over, so uh, 
I will be pleased to answer your questions now or later on Slack, GitHub, the first from long discourse. So no. Um, okay, I stop sharing my my screen. Was it okay? Okay, thanks, Vincent. So there are lots of questions, like the first one. If you could uh, suggest a good tutorial to learn rapid application development tools, like Clay. Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat this? If you could suggest uh, a tutorial to learn to use rapid RAD tools, rapid application development tools. Uh, which tool, sorry? Like Glade. Glade, okay. Um, in fact, in, uh, if you look, yeah, if you so have a wiki of GK. Is it, is it, is I, I mean, so if you could suggest a tutorial to uh, learn rapid application development tools. Yes, uh, there is some, uh, some tools here in um, learning GTK and the wiki of a project. You will find some good tutorials, uh, especially this one. Uh, so there are two, here 200 uh, video tutorials on GTK3 by Michael B and uh, in its YouTube channel. And it's, uh, it's a good start point, I think. And there is here a uh, GTK Glade programming tutorial that is good also. So you will find it on the, the wiki page of the project. Okay, and then there's a next question on how low level this API is. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, how much code it is actually needed to create GUIs like uh, of particular complexity like this? Yes, uh, for example, uh, we can have a look at the uh, Julia Pig's buff uh, example. So you can see this is uh, the code. Very 500 lines of code, and perhaps uh, only uh, 100 lines for the scientific computation, and 400 uh, for the other things, but with a lot of, of comments. Okay, and then maybe a uh, last question. Um, it is asked that uh, GPA has a LTPL license, but GTK Fortran is GPL, and if there's any change of changing it to LGPI? It could be changed. Yes, it's a good question. Uh, I'm not an expert, so I don't know exactly how, how we could change the license, but uh, I'm open to, to discussion. Uh, at the beginning of a project, we choose the GPL v3 uh, license. Uh, but not that uh, we could, for example, uh, release. Uh, the core of a library with all the interfaces with uh, another license because it was uh, it is uh, generated automatically by a uh, Python script, so it's not uh, written by human being. <laughs> and uh, I think that for uh, for the code written by a human being, I think uh, if we would like to change the license, we would have to to have an agreement of uh, every contributors, but uh, not so many. So it's possible. I'm open to discussion.